In this video, I'm going to go over the two most important things you need to know right now to survive the coronavirus. Hi, my name is Jason. I'm a paramedic nurse. I wrote the book Tales from the Gurney about my experiences running calls in the Las Vegas 911 system, the busiest system in the United States, all right? And there's just something about being a paramedic that just has you out in front of the problem. And if you've been following my videos for the last couple months, you're pretty much stocked up. And I bring that up tonight because there are now police in front of the supermarkets. The shelves are empty. I went cruising today just to see what was still around because if you've been following my videos, you've been buying stuff for months now, okay? As a paramedic, it's my job to get out in front of the problem and start acting right now. And that brings us to the first of the two problems that we're gonna go over in this video about what you need to know to survive the coronavirus, okay? Right now. Here in the United States, we have not started testing. You, we don't need to start testing, all right? Americans don't quarantine well, and you don't need to do any testing. What the United States needs to do is prepare for the wave of sick people at this point, because we don't seem to be doing anything about it, even though we just watch it happen right there in Seattle, right? Right here in Seattle. We just got to watch it happen right there in Seattle, Washington. And nothing has changed. So what do you need to watch for? What do you, what is the final sign before the tipping point? And it's this. The hospitals are starting to build extra spaces. They're putting tents out in the parking lot. They're starting to get clever without any, without any leadership from the government. They're starting to get clever and they're starting to prep out in the parking lot. So you're not allowed inside anymore unless they let you in. They're starting to limit the resource, access to the resource. And we're on the daily. Hospitals are full and already overbooked and crowded. And medicine, you know how the stores are out of food? Medicine is on the same shipping time. We do not have 100 days worth of medicine in the United States. All right? Now, when it comes to the coronavirus, the thing you need to watch out for is the news on television that's telling you that they're full in the hospital. Because if you look at the, the average 100 coronavirus patients, 85% mild to moderate or higher, 15% critical or super critical, 10% critical, 5% super critical. These are the ones that have a very high probability of death, even with intervention. The 10% critical, have a high probability of death even with intervention, but not as high because they can still be saved easily. The problem is we're not marshalling our resources. They're talking about ventilators, right? We've got 64,000 new ones, 50,000 old ones, this, that. How are they even going to get them out across the United States if they're in the reserve storage? There's been no advanced motion. And I'm okay, we don't have to test anybody. You'll know exactly where the problem is. As we saw in Seattle, when 20-some patients in one facility died, yo, you know where the problem is. The only reason to test people is if we're going to quarantine people. And Americans, Americans don't quarantine well. That's my cat, Nikki Spectacular. Americans don't quarantine well. There is nobody else there is no other country on the planet that when they're about to get put on lockdown, went out and spent half their money on ammunition. They locked down Wuhan. They all went home and bought rice and Yu-Gi-Oh's. Pokemons, whatever. Nobody bought ammunition in Wuhan, right? Everybody just sort of backed out of the factory and uh, with the last one out to uh, please turn off the lights. For China, dude, they're going to walk back in and turn their country on. Now, I haven't been suggesting that you go buy food because of the quarantine. I've been suggesting that you go buy food so you don't have to fight with other people. Because China may be at the point where they're ready to release, you know, where they're starting to slow down their infections. But you can't release your quarantine until everybody is done with it 
I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, here's Africa. They're just getting started. They're like weeks behind us. Maybe. Who knows? I mean, what are you going to do? You're just going to saw off Air Africa and sort of push them out into the ocean until they can't come ashore? What are you going to do? I hear there's lots of Africans going to school in, in Wuhan. You're going to prevent them from coming back to school? So we are not safe, and you have not heard this from anybody else, but we are not safe until everybody is done with it. And at least that, at that point, at least at that point, we have the probability of not becoming sick again. Because let's be real, we've watched SARS, MERS, HIV, uh, Ebola. We've watched all these things attack humanity. And it seems like the viruses are getting smarter. It's not just me, right? Because what happened with SARS? With SARS, you got sick so fast, so hard, it was obvious. And it was a difficult to transmit person to person. They're telling you to wash your hands and don't worry about a mask. What I'm telling you is everybody on the princess ship was quarantined to their rooms. They didn't even need to wash their hands and they still got sick. And that's because if you're in a room with 100 people, do you need to wash your hands or hold your breath? Do you see my point? That's why they say wash your hands, but you're not allowed to socially gather anymore. Duh, because if washing your hands solved the problem, they wouldn't be telling you to gather, not gather socially. You, you see this, right? Washing your hands. If you're going to get the coronavirus, it is not because you are wiping things down. When I was cruising through Target the other night, I picked up a little bit of Mucinex. The lady was holding and wiping stuff off as she picked it up and looked at it. That's not, that's not what's going to save you, washing your hands. A mask isn't going to save you. It's not going to be it's on your hands. The chance of you picking up a Cororo boogie and getting it in your eye or... Americans are diggers. I mean, I know Americans are diggers, right? But the probability of that happening versus you getting it airborne is exactly dick. You're going to get it airborne. The lady in Costco today, she's like, card. <coughs> and the, literally the two people behind me, she like, <coughs> you know what I mean? And she coughed on you as you were walking in today. We were cruising around Costco. I feel stupid for not buying more. Just a couple bags of beef jerky. Beef jerky lasts you like three days. You know what I mean? One of those one pound bags for 10 bucks. Three days. You are buying food so you don't have to go fight with the masses when everything comes back online. And that's if there's no rioting because China just locked their doors. They didn't lock them. They just backed out and closed them. I don't even think there's locks in China. All right. The first thing you have to watch out for, the last thing you have to watch out for, is when the hospitals are full. Because what happens when your family gets sick, right? So this is how you can make your own ventilator at home. This ventilator works as long as you have a respiratory drive. So if you are on opiates and you pass out from overdosing on opiates and you stop breathing because of the opiates, this will not help you. But if you are one of the 10% that are critical but not super critical, this system will absolutely help you. It is a ventilator without you being intubated or getting a trach hole. All right? As long as you have a respiratory drive, these two things right here is everything that they're going to do for you in the hospital. Okay, and this is, it occurred to me the other day, and I built this system and sent one out to my kid for my family where he is and for his kids, <laughs> right? I mean, you can't build one for yourself and your kid's like, why didn't you build one for us, right? And so, listen, I'm not dealing with that guilt, right? <laughs> no, no, no. So I built, I duplicated this system. I bought the smaller version of this for them. Now, this is an oxygen concentrator. There's something like 21% oxygen in the atmosphere, right? 79% nitrogen. This cleverly separates the nitrogen. And you can get 10 liters per, per minute from this unit. Most of them are five, and I'm going to show you all this equipment in a minute. Most of them that you see are five liters. I stepped it up to a 10. It wasn't much more. I found a deal on it. I knew what I was looking for. 10 liters per minute is enough to bag a patient up while you're doing CPR. Is 15 better? Sure, but 10, fan, 
fantastic 10 liters per minute, all right? This is a CPAP machine. It is a constant, positive, airway, pressure machine. It blows air into your lungs, into your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Now, it doesn't intubate you, right? But as long as you're breathing, this machine will give you more air. Now, if you remember the 10% and the 5% that become critical, the x-rays say that they're showing that ground glass in their lungs. You remember what that's from, right? It's from the pneumonia. And what happens with pneumonia? You get fluid in the lungs. You get mucus in the, you can get mucus covering the surface of the alveoli. You can have comorbidity conditions like COPD or emphysema, CHF, whatever those things are, okay? However, if you don't have those and you are one of those 10% that's going to become critical, this is everything. Now, this will give you not only 5 or 10 liters of oxygen, it will blow it down your throat. Now, there are two types of machines like this. There's a CPAP and a BiPAP. A CPAP blows air in. A BiPAP is biphasic. It somehow deals with you breathing out, but it doesn't suck the air out. So let me just tell you that this CPAP machine is all you need. Because on a CPAP machine, there are two settings. The amount of air while you're sucking in, it gives you a bonus like scuba gear. And upon the exhale, when you provide a little bit of pushback, it blocks it and it sets the incoming air to a lower setting. Okay, and that's all you need. You can use a BiPAP, but a CPAP machine works just as well. This cost me $500, that cost me $125, $625. The mask cost me $50, the oxygen attachment cost me $10, the little swivel uh, they threw in. Uh, this is what the mask and the hose look like in the, in the bags. And it was pretty simple. What I did was I went to, right, I just went to a CPAP store, and you can't believe this, right, unless you're on a CPAP machine. There are just, I mean, there are just so many masks and different ways to do this and different sizes, and there are two kinds of masks I want you to be aware of. There is the full face mask that goes over the nose and mouth, and that's what's in this picture, and there is the nose mask. I am telling you, you want this mask. You want the full face mask. You do not want the nose mask. You don't want the one that just goes up right in there. None of that. You want the full face mask. Now this was 75 bucks. I bought a couple, I think I got them for like 50, okay? You can find them on eBay, 40, 50 bucks, Amazon, all right? The hose, I think was 15 bucks online, 25 when I bought it from the guy. But I'll tell you something. These machines are by prescription only. So how did I get them in one day and multiple of them? Well, what I did was I went to Craigslist and I typed in oxygen concentrator and you will find them. Here, this one is a five liter oxygen concentrator. It's uh, 300 bucks. This is a 10 liter for 700 bucks. I got this one for 500 because there's a hole in it. They were gonna have to fix the hole. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Not so fast. I don't need that hole fixed. And so I got a 10 liter for 500. These are oxygen concentrators. You can do the same thing with the CPAP machine. Now, this is my book, Tales from the Gurney. Now, because people that use these to keep their throat open, uh, their airway open while they're sleeping, these things are set to very high pressure. All right, but that's not what you need as with pneumonia with fluid in the lungs a couple of things you're trying to do Okay, one you're trying to get the fluid out of the lungs back into the bloodstream a little bit of a diuretic something like that You can find those online a Little bit of a diuretic you pee you drink a little less the fluid goes the other thing that you're gonna do is you want to pressurize your lungs. You're gonna get tired from breathing fast. Trust me, I've got a whole section in my book about breathers. 
and you're going to get tired fast. And it's going to be surprisingly fast, like just how fast the shelves in the stores were empty, okay? Now, this combination right here, together, by turning this down and adding oxygen to the tubing from the oxygen concentrator, this is now... 100% a non-invasive ventilator and you can just type in how to program whatever one of these you have because I got three different one one BiPAP two CPAPs for 300 bucks all right I, mean, I spent 1500 bucks building a couple different systems right I did I sent one out to the you know to my kid with the note that says save someone all right you're going to want humidity as well Try to get some sort of humidifier one. They pretty much all have it. But you are going to want a humidity tank. Because I did this for like 30 minutes. Yeah, your voice gets pretty dry and your throat starts to get kind of raw. All right? So this is face mask. They get pretty serious with the headgear. I'm telling you, you have to seal it against your face. You are going to be a little anoxic. You are lack of oxygen you are going to be a little anxious because you're a little low on oxygen it's going to feel like it's suffocating you to some extent you'll swat at it I'm telling you don't fight it uh, let's let's start this up first thing we just said this one is a Philips Respironics I don't care which one of these things you buy they're all pretty good doesn't matter how old it is you're gonna need it to last for seven days if you're, if you're one of the critical, all you're going to do is turn it on. Now, I programmed this one to be almost the same or a little more when I breathe out. So maybe I can push against it. But either way, I just want it about the same as my breathe out. Now, usually you go to a sleep study and a doctor and they write prescriptions for all this, all right? Whatever. This is set to seven. This is set... This is set to four. When I got this, it was set from 13 to 20. This is four on the in and three on the out. If you want to know if somebody's having a respiratory problem, they're going to breathe from right here. They're lifters. These are their lifters. These are their retractors. If they're sucking in hard, you're going to see their retractors, but when they're wheezing because they're congested, you're going to see their lifters. From sideways, it looks like this. As opposed to just normal belly breathing. You know what I mean? You don't see it. You don't hear it. Now with this, when you put it on, it's already blowing into my face. Now, even as my chest gets congested, if I require more force to push in, all I have to do is turn this thing off and then push the two buttons and it takes me to set up and I can just up the pressure right there one on one. I can set the humidity. It's got a little hot plate in there. I can, if you don't have a hot plate, you can put a, 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 like a little heating blanket underneath it. What I'm getting at here is, this is fully adjustable for you. It is available publicly. You can go get it on Craigslist. You know, even if you don't have the oxygen adapter on your mask to plug it into, You can still just as easily, you know what I mean? A nasal cannula gets two to six LPM. You could just as easily you can just as easily do it like this. You can put it in your mouth. If you're a mouth breather. Whoa.
See what I'm saying? And as long as you have the respiratory drive to pull air in because your lungs are working in terms of you don't have COPD or CHF, you can get a little bit of a diuretic, get the fluid out of you, get a humidifier like in here because it's going to dry you out, get the mucus, keep the mucus wet, get a little bit of a mucinex that breaks up the, loop, the, the, the mucus and maybe, you know, whether you choose a cough suppressant or not, some people like to cough it up, maybe, maybe not, don't know, but at least get the mucinex that breaks up the mucus and the phlegm, get the positive pressure airway that blows the air, it forces high oxygen air, so whatever lung you have left that still doesn't have water in it from the pneumonia, you will drive as much oxygen as possible into whatever you have left. And that's a ventilator, isn't it? Now there are alarms on here that will talk about leakage from under the mask. Squeak, squeak. There are alarms that if you stop breathing, but none of these things have any concern, you can turn off all the alarms. If you're working to breathe, you're not gonna fall asleep, buddy. And then you just get yourself comfortable in a chair There's a couple of holes right here in the mask. So when you breathe out, the air comes out here. That's why you don't want too much air pushing against you when you breathe out. Now, there is an inspiration pressure. You want that to be higher because you want it to push the air into your lungs. There is an expiratory pressure. So inspiratory pressure, IPAP. Expiratory pressure, EPAP. Expiratory pressure. That way you don't have to push the air against all that air coming in, okay? Now, you're going to set it a little bit lower because it's going to be adding 5 liters per minute. That's part of it. Some of, the, some, some of them have altimeter settings. So if you set your breath at 3 on the EPAP and let's say 5 on the IPAP, you can use the, the, the uh, elevation altitude to turn your three into a four or four and a half so you can get a little more pressure without having to reset it. A lot of these things, reprogram it. A lot of these things have a ramp button too that'll take it down. They say when you're, when you're using this for sleep apnea that it, it helps you fall asleep. But here, if you need a little more air, you can set it to a little more air and you can take a break if you need it by hitting the ramp button. But they're easily programmable. These work, they set up super easy. I mean, it's all silicone connectors. This is, the, this is the oxygen connector. It goes right in between, right? Just make sure you have all the hoses that'll connect from your oxygen connector to this. You don't want to find out that you've got a bunch of straws from McDonald's in there. You know what I'm saying? You won't be able to wear your glasses. But I'm telling you, as long as you keep breathing, this ventilator will maximize your respirations and oxygen levels. Easy to program, it's quick to figure out. The last thing that you have to determine is the rise. So you have that expiratory pressure, the inspiratory pressure, but when you start breathing in, how long before the machine is back up to full speed? And you'll find those settings that are comfortable for you as you, and I encourage you to use them before you, uh, before you get sick. But this is everything that a hospital is going to do for you uh, in terms of that 10% that's critical, super critical. They may very well have to intubate you and suck the air out of you. But, but even then, right? Maybe two people in your house don't get sick at the same time. You don't need 10 liters. You can buy five liters in one mask. To clean the tubing and everything, it's pretty simple. You just float it in a little bit of dishy, dishwasher soap water. Don't put it in the dishwasher. You know what I mean? Put the tube in some water so it gets into the center of the tube. Uh, 400 bucks, 125 bucks, 100 bucks in this. 600 bucks, 700 bucks, up to a thousand bucks for your own personal home 
ventilator. I mean, you spend 4000 on your Peloton. Ain't going to do you no good if you're dead. Save somebody in your family. Protect yourself. I, I wish you all the best. Um, you know what I mean? I'm going to go out to work where I go to different facilities now, and I'm going to go do picks. I do the world's smallest surgery. <laughs> My name is Jason. I'm a paramedic nurse. Stay safe. So stock up. Try to do everything you can to protect you and yours because it doesn't look like uh, us and ours are doing anything for us.